Hello everyone, I am Surendra Reddy, Faculty for Electrical Machines at Ohm Institute, Hyderabad. In this session, I am going to discuss about double cage induction motor. This topic is especially useful for upcoming AWE exam in Telangana and also this topic is useful for engineering services exam. But this topic is not present in the syllabus of gate examination. However, learning about double cage induction motor is useful at least for technical interviews. But before learning about double cage induction motor, one should have idea about a conventional squirrel cage induction motor. So before watching this lecture, I request you to revise normal squirrel cage induction motor because double cage induction motor is considered as a special induction motor and it is an extension for a conventional squirrel cage induction motor. All right, let's understand how many types of induction motors that we have. We know there are basically two types of induction motors based on the design of rotor magnetic circuit. Those two are uh, squirrel cage induction motor design and slip ring induction motor design. What is the basic disadvantage of squirrel cage induction motor design? Yes, squirrel cage induction motor cannot be used for higher starting torque applications. The main reason behind this is starting torque of an induction motor is always proportional to rotor resistance. And if, you, if, if we wanted to develop higher starting torque, we have to increase rotor resistance that is possible by adding external resistance into rotor. However, in squirrel cage rotor induction motor, external resistance cannot be added since rotor is a short circuited one. Whereas in slip ring induction motor, we can add additional resistance in series with rotor so that higher starting torque is possible. This is the reason why for all high starting torque applications, slip ring induction motor is preferred. Therefore, the disadvantage with normal squirrel cage induction motor is it cannot be used for high starting torque applications. So to overcome that disadvantage, we have a special design known as double cage induction motor design. So let's understand uh, what is the basic difference between single cage induction motor that is normal squirrel cage induction motor and double cage induction motor. All right. Now you can see here we have a single cage induction motor. So in case of a squirrel cage induction motor or a single cage induction motor, the rotor magnetic circuit will consist of number of copper bars like this. All these copper bars are located on this outer surface of the rotor, uh, you know, using slots. And most important thing is that all these copper bars are short circuited on both sides using an end ring. See here, we have an end ring. Let me show you that. This is an end ring. And this end ring itself is a conductor. We will use either copper or aluminum. And that end ring is a short circuiting all the copper bars. Similarly, on the other side also, there will be one more end ring. This end ring will short circuit all the copper bars. That means I can say a squirrel cage rotor construction is nothing but number of copper bars all are being short circuited on both sides. Therefore, it's a closed circuit. As it is being short circuited on both sides, we cannot add additional resistance into rotor. That's why higher starting torque is not possible. Now, let's understand what exactly mean by double cage induction motor. Remember, single cage induction motor and double cage induction motor are different in construction only with respect to rotor. The state or construction will be same in both machines. Okay. So, let's understand what is double cage induction motor. All right. Now, you can see in this diagram, we have cross-sectional view of a double cage induction motor. Okay. Yes, this is the rotor cross section and this structure is known as the slot structure. Currently, you are looking at the slot. One slot only I have shown you, but a practical machine will have a number of slots like that. And you can understand here, the slot consists of two layers. One is the top layer of the rotor, another one is the bottom layer of the rotor. And if you look at the diagram carefully, you can easily understand, I have drawn the design in such a way that top layer has less cross-sectional area and bottom layer has more cross-sectional area. This is to create a resistance difference between top layer and bottom layer. We know that resistance offered by any conductor is rho L by cross-sectional area. And look at the top layer, top layer has less cross-sectional area. Therefore, the conductor placed in top layer will offer higher resistance. And bottom layer has more cross-sectional area. 
therefore the conductor which is placed in bottom layer will offer less resistance that is the reason why we designed the rotor slot with different cross sectional area suppose if you don't want different cross sectional areas you wanted to make your rotor design very simple in that case design top layer and bottom layer with the same cross sectional area however use high resistance materials in top layer and use low resistance materials in bottom layer what is a low resistance conductor we know copper therefore use a copper conductor in bottom layer and what are the high resistance material you can use bronze okay aluminium other materials which offers a high resistance you can use them in the top layer so top layer high resistance material bottom layer low resistance material in that case cross section is uh, not not going to be different you can use the same cross section but if you use the same material in top layer and bottom layer make sure that the cross sections are different so that resistance offered by the conductors are going to be different so very simple we are going to place low cross sectional area copper conductor in the top layer higher cross sectional area conductor in the bottom layer due to that high, top layer will offer high resistance and the bottom layer will offer low resistance so i can mention here the top layer offers high resistance and the bottom layer offers low resistance okay and if you look at carefully there is a small gap available between top layer and bottom layer and this gap is known as a slit in technical terms we will call it as a slit and this slit is filled with an aluminium material aluminium means can i say it is also a conductor only that means indirectly the top layer and the bottom layer are directly in contact with each other what is the reason for that very simple you see that this bottom layer especially it is deep inside the rotor as it is deep inside the rotor when it is carrying current through it obviously copper losses will create due to the copper losses this bottom layer conductor will start heated and heat has to be dissipated right otherwise the machine is going to overheat and damage that's why in order to dissipate the heat from the bottom layer this slit will help you so the heat will transfer from the bottom layer to top layer and from the top layer that heat will go to the air gap okay because air is the medium through which the heat will dissipate but for top layer as it is very near to air gap heat will automatically dissipate but for bottom layer this slit will help you okay so that will help for the you know heat to transfer from bottom layer to top layer and from the top layer it will go to the air okay now now the next topic here is about leakage flux yes which layer will offer higher leakage and which layer will offer lower leakage and don't forget that guys this is the rotor design or stator design rotor design squirrel cage rotor stator design is very same between uh, you know normal squirrel cage machine and uh, double cage induction motor okay this is the rotor design so let's understand about leakage flux here all right now you can see this is a complete design here we have the stator magnetic circuit this is the stator magnetic core and this is the rotor magnetic core and the medium between the two is air gap medium and we wanted to talk about rotor leakage flux right now we know that what is mean by leakage flux leakage flux means it will it is a flux which is linking both stator and rotor or only one magnetic circuit yes it is a flux linking only one magnetic circuit as i am talking about rotor leakage flux indirectly it is a flux linking only rotor magnetic circuit and we have here two conductors right now one is a top layer conductor another one is a bottom layer conductor so let's talk about the leakage flux created by both of them and i am also assuming that top layer conductor and bottom layer conductors are current carrying conductors and right now they are carrying the current into the plane if a current is into the plane using right hand thumb rule can i say the flux is around the four fingers of the right hand so current is into the plane now my four fingers will represent the flux and i would like to talk about leakage flux right now so that leakage flux will link only rotor magnetic circuit so let us let me uh, mark the leakage flux over here current is into the plane my four fingers will represent the mag uh, the, you know the leakage flux yes you see that this is the leakage flux created by top layer okay and similarly bottom layer conductor is also carrying the current so this is the leakage flux created by bottom layer 
this is the leakage flux created by bottom layer and now you look at the leakage flux created by top layer the top layer leakage flux is definitely passing through air gap medium and air will offer high reluctance or low reluctance high reluctance that means top layer flux will face more opposition that's why the magnitude of leakage created by the top layer conductor is low and you look at the bottom layer leakage flux this is the leakage flux created by bottom layer and this bottom layer leakage flux is passing through the core medium or it is entering to air medium yes it is passing through the core medium and we know that core will offer very low reluctance that means bottom layer has less opposition to its leakage flux that's why leakage flux is more in bottom layer okay so the leakage flux created by top layer is less because of more opposition by the air gap and leakage flux created by bottom layer is very high because there is no opposition for it because it is not going through air gap so that means if i compare leakage flux if i compare leakage flux yes top layer creates less leakage flux and bottom layer creates more leakage flux bottom layer creates more leakage flux already we discussed about resistance and we concluded about leakage reactance also indirectly if leakage flux is more leakage reactance is more if leakage flux is low leakage reactance is low therefore finally what is the comparison between a top layer and a bottom layer yes let me separate both of them top layer and bottom layer yes top layer will offer high resistance or low resistance yes look at this uh, the top layer has less cross sectional area therefore it will offer high resistance bottom layer has more cross sectional area so it will offer low resistance okay all right so top layer offers high resistance bottom layer offers low resistance so resistance wise the top layer is high bottom layer is low what about leakage wise top layer leakage is passing through air gap therefore it will face more opposition so leakage flux is low bottom layer has no air gap leakage flux is passing mainly through core medium so less opposition more leakage okay so therefore uh, yes leakage leakage means indirectly the leakage reactance the leakage reactance is low in top layer and leakage reactance is high in bottom layer so that's all so the x by r ratio of top layer and bottom layer are different now and you can see compare x by r ratio yes bottom layer offers a higher x by r ratio compared to top layer now let's talk about starting torque and full load torque here yes before discussing about starting torque and full load torque one should understand the equivalent circuit of rotor yes we know that at starting at starting what is the speed of the rotor we know that at starting the speed of the rotor is equal to zero that's why slip equal to one if a slip we know formula for slip is ns minus nr by ns if nr is zero ns uh, slip equal to one if a slip equal to one can i say this will be the equivalent circuit of rotor yes rotor resistance r2 rotor leakage reactance x2 rotor voltage e2 and rotor current i2 yes suppose if slip is not equal to one if slip is other than one then you will get r2 by s here and x2 here now what is the formula for starting torque we also know that starting torque of an induction motor is equal to 3 by omega s into i2 square into r2 therefore the magnitude of the starting torque will depend upon rotor current as well as rotor resistance and also look at this equivalent circuit right now there is a resistance and there is a leakage reactance and we know that in every electrical machine winding resistance is always less than leakage reactance or winding resistance is always more than leakage reactance yes you take any electrical machine winding resistance is always less than leakage reactance that is how machines will be designed if resistance is very high copper losses becomes excessively high and machine may damage therefore resistance is always very low compared to leakage reactance that means in this equivalent circuit r2 is very small compared to x2 or x2 is very small compared to r2 yes r2 is very small compared to x2 because winding resistance is always less 
when compared with leakage reactants. As R2 is very small, neglect this R2. If I neglect R2, what is the magnitude of current I2? Therefore, I2 magnitude will be equal to E2 by X2. That means the magnitude of I2 is mainly controlled by leakage reactance or mainly controlled by resistance. Yes, magnitude of the current is mainly controlled by leakage reactance. Therefore, whichever conductor is offering less leakage reactance, that carries more current. Whichever conductor is offering high leakage reactance, that carries less current. And don't forget that this is entirely under which condition? Starting condition. Now tell me here, according to our discussion, which winding is carrying lower leakage reactance? Yes, the leakage reactance is low in which winding? Top layer conductor. That's why magnitude of the current is more in which, uh, you know, uh, conductor. Obviously, the top layer conductor will carry more current than bottom layer conductor. This is at starting. Okay. And also you see that top layer will offer high resistance or low resistance, high resistance. Therefore, what happens to the starting torque created by top layer? Okay. Look at this formula. Starting torque is proportional to square of the current into resistance. Now, right now, top layer has more current or less current. I just shown you that current is inversely proportional to leakage. Top layer has less leakage, therefore it will carry more current. Okay, top layer more I2. At the same time, top layer is offering high resistance or low resistance? High resistance. Top layer high resistance. That means what is the meaning of it? Current magnitude is more, resistance value is also more in which design? Top layer design. That's why starting torque will be dominated by top layer winding top layer winding will produce more starting torque compared to bottom layer winding. Why? Because bottom layer winding offers a high leakage. High leakage means less starting current. Okay, current is less. And also bottom layer winding has more cross section. So it offer less resistance. So current is less, resistance is also less. That means obviously bottom layer winding will offer less starting torque. Okay, that's the conclusion. Therefore, at starting, what is the final uh, conclusion? At starting, the torque created by top layer is definitely more than the torque created by bottom layer or lower cage. Bottom cage or lower cage, anything you can write. This is all at starting or running condition. This is all at starting. Okay, so top layer will create higher starting torque compared to bottom layer. This is under starting condition. Now, let's talk about rated running condition. If I am talking about rated running condition, at running condition, we know that uh, normally, normally, induction motors will rotate at a speed near to synchronous value or near to zero value. Yes, speed will be usually near to synchronous value. If, but it is less than synchronous value, remember that. So, under running condition means NR is not zero, but NR is definitely less than NS. Therefore, slip will be less than 1. Am I right? Slip will be less than 1. But as NR is very close to NS in a normal, uh, you know, running condition, can I say slip is very near to 0? Now, what will be the rotor circuit? The rotor circuit will be like this. Now, resistance offered by the rotor is R2 by S. Leakage reactance is X2. Rotor voltage is E2. And rotor current is I2. This is under running condition. And what is the torque developed during running condition? 3 by omega s into I2 square into R2 by s. So once again, the magnitude of the torque will depend upon current carried by rotor and resistance offered by the winding. Okay. And of course, slip is very near to zero. Okay. Now, what is the magnitude of the current from this particular uh, circuit? Yes, the magnitude of the current will be equal to uh, E2 by square root of R2 by S whole square plus X2 square. But as I told you, as the machine is under running condition, slip is very near to zero. If a slip is very near to zero, can I say R2 by S value becomes very high compared to X2 value? I repeat again, R2 by S is very high because R2 is very high or slip is very low. Yes. As a slip is very low, that's why R2 by S value is very high. 
if r2 by s is very high compared to x2 then x2 can be neglected or r2 by s can be neglected yes x2 can be neglected compared to r2 by s yes if x2 is neglected then what is going to be the equation for current i2 therefore current i2 will be simply e2 by r2 by s that is equal to s into e2 by r2 so from this equation can i say now the magnitude of the current is inversely proportional to resistance that means who will control the magnitude of current under running condition resistance of the winding or leakage reactance of the winding yes predominantly by the resistance of the winding therefore which layer offers lower resistance that layer will carry more current which layer offers higher resistance that layer will offer lower current am i right and we know in case of uh, you know double cage induction motor which layer offers a lower resistance yes bottom layer offers low resistance as the resistance offered by bottom layer is low that means can i say bottom layer winding will carry more current this time so therefore bottom layer bottom layer offers low resistance low resistance indicates high current high current indicates higher torque okay yes if the magnitude of the current is high definitely the torque is going to be high under which condition running condition so can i conclude finally the running condition torque is more due to which layer obviously bottom layer bottom layer offers higher running condition torque top layer will offer higher starting condition torque okay very simple okay i repeat the point again during running condition slip is very near to zero usually slip will vary from 1% to 5% as the slip is very near to zero r2 by s becomes very high if r2 by s is very high x2 can be neglected therefore the magnitude of the current is predominantly controlled by resistance of the winding and the bottom layer offers less resistance therefore bottom layer will carry more current during running condition so as bottom layer is carrying more current obviously bottom layer winding will create higher running torque compared to top layer so what is the final conclusion in case of a double cage induction motor top layer will create higher starting torque and bottom layer will create higher running torque now if i combine both of them together in a same induction motor suppose if i use only top layer if i don't use bottom layer can i say starting torque is high and running torque is low suppose if i use only bottom layer and i don't use top layer then starting torque is low and running torque is high therefore what if we use both windings together if we use both top cage and bottom cage together then definitely starting torque will be high and also running torque is high okay so let's try to draw torque speed characteristics of double cage induction motor so very simple what we are going to do here is that we will draw top layer torque speed characteristics first and then we will draw bottom layer torque speed characteristics then combine both of them we will get result into torque speed characteristics okay so i am taking speed on x axis and i am taking torque on y axis let's talk about the top layer first what is our observation top layer the starting torque is more and running torque is less running torque is less starting torque is more so starting means can i say nr is equal to 0 running condition means can i say nr is very near to ns so at the time of starting top layer will offer high starting torque this is the starting torque due to top cage or outer cage you can also call it as okay and then this is the expected torque speed characteristics of uh, you know top cage winding or you can say outer cage winding you see under running condition running condition means when nr is very near to ns can i say the torque offered by this top layer winding is very very low yes under running condition you can see very very low okay next let's talk about torque speed characteristics of bottom layer winding what is our observation bottom layer winding has less starting torque but high running torque starting torque is less but running torque is high so starting torque of bottom layer winding is less 
this is the starting torque of bottom layer winding but under running condition higher running means when speed is near to ns therefore obviously okay let me read wrong somewhere like this this is the torque speed characteristics of bottom layer winding or inner cage winding and this is the torque speed characteristics of top layer okay and also if you compare the maximum torques of these two machines i request you to focus on maximum torque points this is the maximum torque due to top layer winding maximum torque due to bottom layer winding which maximum torque looks high top layer why because maximum torque formula if you remember from normal conventional induction motor maximum torque is always equal to 3 by omega s into uh, e2 square divided by 2x2 and from this equation we can conclude that maximum torque is inversely proportional to leakage reactance and it is independent of rotor resistance therefore the winding which has lower leakage reactance can offer higher maximum torque obviously which winding has lower leakage here top layer winding has lower leakage therefore it offers higher maximum torque that is the reason why top layer maximum torque is more compared to bottom layer but under running condition that means when speed is very near to synchronous speed you can understand bottom layer winding offers higher torque than top layer winding now what is mean by resultant torque speed characteristics can i say resultant torque speed characteristics is sum of these two so let's add both of them and then we can get the resultant characteristics so this is the starting torque of top layer starting torque of bottom layer if you combine both of them that is the starting torque of resultant even under running condition also add both of them so approximately we will get something like this this is the resultant characteristics torque speed characteristics of a double cage induction motor therefore finally what is the advantage of double cage induction motor the advantage is starting torque is increased even the running torque is also improved what if i use only top layer if i use only top layer starting torque may be high but running torque is very poor if i use only bottom layer starting torque is low running torque is high both has one disadvantage but if I combine both of them in a single machine, definitely the resultant torque offers better starting performance as well as better running performance also. Okay. It's simply superposition of top layer winding and bottom layer winding together. Okay. That means finally you tell me in case of double cage induction motor, which winding offers higher starting torque top layer winding in some of the textbooks, it is also known as outer cage winding. Anything is same which winding offers lower starting torque bottom layer winding or inner cage winding which winding offers higher running torque bottom layer winding which winding offers lower running torque top cage winding or outer cage winding and if you combine both of them that is known as double cage induction motor and now total how many windings are available in case of double cage induction motor total three windings are available first winding is stator winding second winding is top layer winding third winding is bottom layer winding total three windings are there and this top layer winding and bottom layer winding both belongs to rotor part of the machine or stator part of the machine rotor part of the machine okay now let us try to draw equivalent circuit of this double cage induction motor okay so very simple we have three windings right now one winding is in stator two windings are in rotor so let's try to develop the uh, equivalent circuit of double cage induction motor equivalent circuit this equivalent circuit is very similar to conventional induction motor circuit in conventional induction motor there is only one winding in rotor but now we have two windings one is top layer another one is bottom layer so let's see so first stator stator winding will have a resistance and leakage reactance r1 and x1 and then we have a shunt branch having magnetizing reactance coming to rotor rotor is now having two windings and both are directly connected electrically okay so i will apply just superposition so i am assuming top layer winding is a second winding therefore it will offer a resistance 
R2 by S and leakage reactance X2. And we have another winding known as bottom layer winding or inner cage winding that is like third winding for us and that has a resistance R3 by S and leakage reactance X3. So what is mean by R2, R3 here, R2 is top layer winding resistance, R3 is bottom layer winding resistance or outer cage, inner cage. X2 is top layer leakage reactance, X3 is bottom layer leakage reactance, that's all. So imagine this branch is carrying a current I2, this branch is carrying a current I3. Together can I say this is the total rotor current? Yes, combination of the two is the total rotor current. Okay, and here we have a supply voltage V1 and this is the supply current I1. That's all. This is the equivalent circuit of a double cage induction motor. So, if you use only top layer, this bottom layer winding circuit you have to remove, this one you have to keep. If you use only bottom layer winding, this is only you have to use and this you have to remove. Okay, that's all. This is the equivalent circuit of double cage induction motor. Okay. So, finally, the summary points here. The summary points are a double cage induction motor is extension to a normal squirrel cage induction motor having a single cage. Okay. The advantage with double cage induction motor is starting torque can be improved. Whereas in normal squirrel cage induction motor starting torque is very low. So to increase the starting torque we are using two layers in the rotor slot. One is outer cage layer another one is inner cage layer. We can also call it as top layer and bottom layer. Top layer has less cross-sectional area, bottom layer has more cross-sectional area. Due to that, top layer offers high resistance, bottom layer offers low resistance. And leakage reactance is more in bottom layer and less in top layer. Why top layer leakage is less? Because the top layer means very near to air gap. Therefore, leakage flux will pass through air medium. Therefore, leakage is less. Bottom layer is deep inside the rotor. Therefore, leakage will be more. That's why it offers more reactance. At starting, which winding will carry more current? Yes, starting current is predominantly dependent upon leakage reactance. Yes, starting current is inversely proportional to leakage reactance. As top layer offers less leakage, more current will pass through it. And running condition, resistance is predominantly deciding what is the value of, uh, you know, a current. Current is inversely proportional to resistance. As a bottom layer has less resistance, so it carries more current. Okay, that's all. Simple. So top layer will carry will create more starting torque, bottom layer winding will create more running torque. Combine both of them, we will get resultant torque speed characteristics of this machine. Okay. Yes, these are the advantages of double cage induction motor. Okay. But the disadvantage here is that more constructional cost. The cost will obviously increase. Therefore, we will use this motor only in special applications. Okay. Thank you.